Hello guys, today I want to talk about API resources in Laravel. They are called Eloquent API Resources, basically the class that we use to transform the API response into the one that we actually need. And here it is in the official Laravel documentation, and this is a really simple example, and to be honest, I don't really like it because it doesn't capture the essence of why we need resources. It seems like we're returning exactly the same thing from the database. So it doesn't really say that one of the cases why would you need resource is to hide some fields, so maybe there are 10 fields in the database and you return only five, or for example, to transform something in another format. So created ad wouldn't be just created ad, but for example, formatted in another date or time format. A bit better example is down below if we scroll down and it is to load the collection, to load the relationship on posts. And then it kind of makes sense to use those API resources. But in this video, I want to show you three examples which are much more complicated. So I will show you three open source examples. It won't be my code this time, but I will explain it and discuss it with you. How we can use API resources on a much deeper level with a few more syntax things. And the idea for this video came about when I saw the tweet by Laurie Code quoting Colin DeCarlo's talk from Laracon Online with this screenshot. So see how complicated it may get. Let's take a look at this example. Let's zoom it in a bit, open a new tab, zoom, and see what is happening here. So as usual, we return title and content for the post, but then we have author loaded, but only when it is loaded. So this when loaded is a condition that checks whether the author relationship was eager loaded from the controller or from wherever the resource is called, the post resource. It's usually from a controller. So probably there is some kind of post controller, API post controller, which says post with author get and then go through that post resource. So if there is with author loaded, eager loaded from the controller, then we return the author using another resource, author resource. And similar here, comments. Also, we return the collection of the comments, but only if they are eager loaded. So when loaded prevents you from having n plus one query issues, so improve the performance. But also the last one is even more complicated. You can use this when, and this when accepts the condition and then callback function. So let's translate it. If the request user exists, so if we have a request session basically, so if the request user exists and we use optional helper to check that, so if it exists, we get the ID, otherwise it would return null. And if that result is the same as author ID of that post, basically if the author of the post is the same as the logged in user, then we load the revisions for that post. And we load them again only when the revisions are eager loaded from the controller. So see how much logic can be done in just one API resource class. And I want to show you two more examples. One example is from Titan Nova packages and they also use API resources. This is an open source project and I will link all of those in the description below. So JSON resource, this one. So returning the package. And to be honest, I don't really like that package resource is not the name of that file. I'm a big fan of suffixes. So package, if for example, you see new collaborator, what is collaborator? Is it an eloquent model? Is it some kind of class? Is it a resource? Of course, we can scroll down and see that collaborator is an app HTTP resources. So it's a JSON resource, but suffixes help us to define the class purpose automatically immediately. But anyway, we have package resource and some of the fields are relationships. But in this case, it's different syntax. So compare. Here we have resource make, but another way of loading a relationship is actually to create the resource. And the parameter of that resource is this author, which should be probably eager loaded. In this case, they don't really check for that, but probably they take care of that in the controller. Also, you may have another helper or some other logic. So to return the URL, the route is called. So you can reuse the same route from your routes API or routes web with the parameters of this, something like that. Also, there's markdown helper. Also, there's casting to string. And finally, the same tag collection. So we're returning the collection of tags. 
So this is another a bit more complicated example if you compare that to the original Laravel documentation. And the third example I wanted to show you comes from Monica CRM, also open source, and I will also link that in the description. Again, it doesn't have suffixes, so not my style, but it's a personal preference. So activity resource, and here's the result of that. Again, some of the fields are just this ID, some of them are hard-coded, but then we get into helpers. So for example, date helper is loaded on top as date helper. So you can use methods from other parts of your application. Then we create new activity type resource. So again, resource make versus new resource. It's different syntax to achieve the same thing. Then we can use this context count. So another relationship count of that relationship. Then this get context for API is a function of eloquent model. So this refers to the model of activity it is. And if we go to the activity model, we have get contacts, get contacts for API, this one. So it has some filtering and then at the end also returns the collection, the collection wrapped into another API resource. So you can use the model functions here. And again, date helper at the bottom. So here are just a few examples how you can creatively use the API resources, transforming the eloquent query result into exactly what you need. And also at the end, I will mention our quick admin panel generator where we also use API resources. And I will show you an example what we generate. We generate empty API resource. For example, if you have transactions CRUD, you want to edit that. And one of the checkboxes for the CRUD for the eloquent model is to generate API CRUD or not. And if you do generate that, let's view the code. It's app HTTP resources admin because it's for admin panel and for example, transaction resource. So this is how default API resource looks like. I will zoom it in. So if you just run the artisan command, PHP artisan make resource, this will be almost exactly what you get. So if you use our quick admin panel to generate the API, you can transform the result in API resource by deleting this one and returning the array something like this one. I hope this video was helpful. Do you use API resources or do you prefer some other way of transforming the data? Let's discuss in the comments and see you guys in other daily videos on this channel.